ever think about that? It's not. It's not. But you see, God doesn't see nothing like we see. God looks at nothing and he sees potential. It's exact opposite. With God, nothing is raw material. It's something to work with. It's everything that he needs. The Bible said he stood on nothing and he spoke to nothing and something came about. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke in a bunch of nothing and something came out of nothing. Talk about a God that can take nothing. And with that same nothing, And strive 
but he made something beautiful yes. out of my life. Uh, somebody needs to hear me today. Uh, your broken situation today, God's getting ready to turn it around. Uh, if you'll get yourself out of the way and say, okay, God, uh, here I've been trying to do it my way. Uh, how about you doing it your way? Uh, the closer we are to running, uh, the more powerful God is in our lives. Uh, the less we can do, the more he can do. Uh, the smaller we are, the bigger he is. Uh, the weaker we are, the stronger He is. The more potential is not in us or in our strength. It's in Him. All things are in Him. The Bible tells the story of His disciples that He fished all night. And these guys were, were not every day. I mean, they, they were not fishermen like me. But they were not love to go fishing. Every once in a while you take the fish and that makes me happy. My wife and I had taken three days off after camp meeting. And one of those days I got to go fishing. Went out on the boat for four hours, out into the edge of the ocean there, into the, the, the harbor area. And the old boy on the boat with me, boy, he was just catching And I was just doing the best I could do. I was just throwing out there. I had the same bait he had. I just wasn't catching I said, there's something crooked about what you're doing here. I said, you know this water. You know what's under this water. You know everything else about it. Whenever I read this story, and the Bible says that these fishermen are coming in, and they're dejected uh, because they had fished all night long. These were good fishermen. They knew everything about the, the water. They knew everything about the temperature of the water. They knew everything about the barometric pressure. They knew about the phase of the moon. They knew the underwater foundations. They knew everything that was there. Fishing to them, when they said they fished all night, they weren't playing games. They were working and that boat comes slowly toward the shore. And Jesus says, children, have you any need? You know, I love the humanity of their response. They were quick to point out, hey, we fished all night. We toiled all night. We've done everything we could do. We weren't lazy. We weren't laying around on the boat just catching up the moon rays. We've been fishing. But the answer to your question is, we've got a big fat zero. We got nada. We got nothing. We got nothing. We worked as hard as we could work all night long and we got nothing. Some of you come here today and your situation looks like I've got nothing. I've done everything I know how to do to make it work, but I've got nothing. I am broke and busted and disgusted and it's not working out for me. But this didn't happen. I didn't get my healing when they prayed for me. I didn't get my promotion at work they prayed for me. I didn't get this to work out or that to work out. My wife didn't come back home when I prayed about it. This didn't happen and that didn't hear me today. I'm here preaching to somebody that your nothingness is exactly what God needs today to work a miracle with. It's a nothingness. In fact, when you've given it all you got, you've got a fold over nothing. These fishermen came home with one great big boat load of nothing. 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 Their eyes chest were filled with nothing. Jesus hears their mission. They gave it their best and we still have nothing. And when he does, he starts rubbing his hands. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's a boat load of potential right there. <laughs> God's looking at your situation right now and saying, ah, oh, I see a boatload of potential right there. So you tried, it didn't work, okay, that's good. You tried, how about me? You tried, how about me? You tried it without me in your boat this time, huh? Come on now. When he came by the seashore and Peter was washing his hands and Jesus said, hey, can I borrow your boat to preach from? And he said, you might as well use it for something. I didn't catch anything all night long. But listen, in a few minutes, uh, after he preached his message. Let me tell you something about God. God's never going to take nothing from you without giving you something back uh, a whole lot more. He figured after he preached to the multitude that was there on the seashore that day, how old this boy sprint for this boat? You wouldn't use somebody's boat without feel like the old little ring. Not if they were commercial fishermen. So no, it made sense. He said, uh, Cast your net out there. Push out this with the river. He said, but Lord, you don't understand. We toil all night long. And the fish don't bite right here in the harbor. 
They bite right here, folks. Now look, I know, I fish this a thousand times. There ain't no fish out here. I can see him when he smiled. I said, Pete, you've told all night long, but I'm looking for them. All right, man. All right. Come on. You play row, 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 you boat all you want to until you get caught in the boat. You understand? You try to do on all you want, but I'm Come on, just give God your boat. Just give God your boat. Do what you want to do. Just give God your boat. Do what you said to do. Put your mind to figure that on your own. Well, this needs to happen to this. No, 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 no. Get all of that out of here. All your preconceived ideas out of your head. Jesus said, let me have it done. And I'll show you what I'm doing now. He said, watch out into the demon, let down your dad's for a drive. And he scooped up a bubble load of nothing. And when they finished it, they, their necks began to break. You hear me? Because the boat was beginning to sink. Up. You want to know why? We need to realize uh, that all of the nothing that we are is right because Jesus is everything. Uh, he can take your nothings and turn them into something. Uh, he can grab this. If we can get a hold of this fundamental truth today, in just the next few minutes while I'm preaching, uh, there's not a problem too big. Uh, revival's going to come to our homes. Uh, he said, without me, you can do nothing. Uh, Because God's in it. How's God's in it? Good. Right now, before I go any further, what does it need God to do in your life? What is it you need God to do in your life? What is it you've been praying about that you want God to do in your life? Come on, think about it right now. I want you to start praying right now. God, I need you to do this. Uh, God, I got a need right now. Uh, God, there's a situation I'm facing right now that needs a healing. God, I got a problem at work. God, I need you to straighten out. Uh, I got a problem at my home. God, I need you to fix. Uh, I got a sickness in my body. Come on, somebody. You need to start getting it. You need to start announcing it. Uh, hey, God, uh, here's my nothing. This uh, I've done everything I can do, God, but I need you in the middle of my nothing. Oh, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. If you choose to sing a song, said, I am a promise, I am a possibility, I am a promise with a capital P. I've got a great big bundle of potentiality. I am learning. To hear God's voice, and I am me to make the right choice. I am the promise you see. Come on. You gotta understand, you got a lot of promises. You got a lot of promises, you got a lot of potential, but you need a God. You need a God. You need a God to show up in the middle of your nakedness and turn it around. And turn When we think that we're that we're the one that matters, that we're the ones who get the job done. You know, one of our biggest problems is we, we're, we're pretty self-sufficient. We're pretty self-sufficient. Hey, I can do it. Yes. I'm big and I'm bad. I can do it. I'm best with me. I can I got another control. I'm going to break you up. I've got a man sitting in my office this past in a while back. I'm going to say the man. Sitting in the counseling center, and that's what he does for a living. Is he's a counselor. That's what he does. Is he's a counselor, and he's sitting there on his knees on the floor, crying like a baby. And he says, "I can't fix what's wrong with my wife. I feel like such a failure because I can't fix what's broken." Now, hear me today. God's going to get you in a situation that you cannot be self-sufficient and fix what you think you can fix uh, because you're going to learn to depend on God uh, and say, God, uh, it's broken. Uh, but I need you uh, because I don't know how. I don't know how. Come on, somebody. Come on, 
say it's my nothing because I've been trying to be rebellious. No, 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 no. But if it's that nothingness that brings you closer to God, it's the greatest thing that ever happened to you. If you can just get it in God's hand, He is going to take care of it. He's your everything. When we recognize that fundamental truth, when we commit ourselves and our nothing by placing ourselves in His hand, and we say, God, here we go. I can't do this without you. I can't sing without you. I can't preach without you. I can't pray without you. I can't win without you. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I love that old song. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Hear me today. Somebody needs to get that in your heart today. You're never going to make it by yourself. You need God more than you realize you need God. Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, established churches across all the known world and preached in Caesar's household. He was part of a jailbreak. He survived a shipwreck. He was stoned and left for dead. He was a man who changed the world. Even whom secular historians have said one of the greatest human that ever influenced the world. Paul would say if I was going to bra brag about anything, uh, tell you what I'm going to brag about. Uh, let me glory in my infirmities. Uh, let me tell you about my weaknesses. Uh, let me glory in what I cannot do and what I cannot accomplish. Uh, if I'm going to glory, I'm going to glory in my nothingness. When I'm weak, that's when you shine. When I'm at my weakest point, that's when God is at His best point. Failure. You know, we look at our lives, sometimes we think, well, that didn't work out good. No, no, no. When I'm at my lowest, weakest, brokenness, failure point, that is a great place. You say, well, I'm at the bottom. Let me tell you something. The bottom is a great place to start. It's a great place to build a strong foundation is when you're on the bottom. Hear me? That's your footing when you're on the bottom. You can't go any lower when you're on the bottom. The only
transparent with you. There have been times I've walked in this pulpit and I didn't feel like I had anything to say. Uh, I've been fighting ever thing that I could ever have to fight. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. Uh, when that pulpit calls, uh, it's not about self-serving. Uh, as you get up from there, you walk right back to that pulpit. Uh, you're sick in body, but you're preaching healing. Uh, you're broke, uh, but you're preaching faith. Uh, you're discouraged, uh, but you're preaching worship. They begin to sing, and as they begin to sing, the power of God begin to come down. You want to know why it came down? I'm going to tell you. Tell you what I believe. I don't believe there was an earthquake. I believe that God dispatched four angels. I believe they're singing. The, the Bible said the prisoners heard them sing. But I believe that God heard them sing. I believe that it reached all the way to the throne room of heaven. And God just back four angels said, go down there and get a hold of that jailhouse. Uh, pick that thing up, shake it real good. Uh, shake it till every door falls off its hinges. Uh, every lock is broken uh, and every prisoner's freed. Uh, hey, hear me. You want to know why I believe that? Because when they came out of there, don't say anything about the streets being destroyed and the buildings falling down. I think God can localize anything he wants to. But the minute that the door sprung open, you know what the prisoners were doing, don't you? Jailbreak, let's go! All the bones up. You know what the bones up? I see signs. Less spiritual. Okay, I'm stopped. Okay? This is Paul over here. Thank you. I'm saying, let's go, boy. Let's go. The door's open. My feet are loose. Feet don't fail, man. Oh! My feet are doing the happy dance. You understand? I'm leaving. I promise you, that door came open and it's gone. <laughs> Except Paul got open. Hang on. What? 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 Just wait. Wait, boy. Wait, boy. Just wait. Just wait, boy. Wait, boy. They're going to find out in a minute. Pop the door again. What are we going to do? We're waiting for it. Boom! In comes the Roman jailer with a sword in his hand. Makes him kill himself. Paul said, hey! Hold it! We're here! <laughs> what are y'all doing here? I didn't cause this riot. I didn't cause this quake. I didn't cause the door to come. The Bible said he fell on his knees. Begin to talk to God. He said, I want you to baptize me and my family. Let me tell you what happened. A revival broke out in Philippi. And people began to get the Holy Ghost. And they began to baptize me in Jesus. They baptized those that had already been baptized. They now were baptizing in Jesus' name. And when the revival broke out and the church is full, I can see Paul when he dances across the platform one day. And he says to Simon, that's the reason I didn't tell Come on, are you waiting on your miracle today? Come on, somebody needs to be waiting on your miracle today. Some of you need to start believing in your miracle today. You are definitely a speech of the You need to understand that whatever it is that you're wrestling with today, your nothingness has to be put into His hands and let Him turn it through. You say, but Brother Blizzard, you don't know what I'm going through. But sometimes you got to go through the nothingness to get to God's somethingness. 
You hear me? The woman with the issue of blood for 12 years had grown constantly worse and worse and worse and worse. And the Bible says, and it was nothing the better. She wasn't having a good day and a bad day. She's having all the bad days. Come on, some of you have been having some bad days. I'm talking to somebody here today. You've been having some bad days. You said, this is not working out like I thought it was going to work out. But you're not here by accident today. God's got you here by divine appointment today. Your name is going to turn around. Because I want you to take your own nothing. And I want you to bring it to Jesus today. I want you to step out by faith with your nothing is right now. You've got a situation that you need God to move in. I just want you to come and hold your hands out as you come. And say, God, I'm bringing you a bunch of nothing this today. I don't have the answer to my problem. But I'm bringing it to you. Come on, would you come? Would you come right now? I know they're trying to get ready to sing, but they don't need them to sing to get you to pray. Bring your brokenness to Jesus right here, right now. God, I need a miracle. God, I need a healing. God, I need a restoration. I need you to move in my home, God. I need you to move in my job, God. I need you to move in my life, God. I need you right now, right here today, God, to work a miracle in me. Come on, come on. They're coming all over this place today. Right now, that he's going to meet that need. He's going to meet your need right now. 